Products from Oppo are almost never dull, almost always are fancy, and unfortunately always want more money for the things that could be less expensive. At least this is what I often see in comments to the videos about smartphones of this brand. Today we talk about Oppo Reno3 Pro, another expensive, attractive and interesting product. My name is Bogdan, welcome to Techfellas! Let's break some rules and instead of the outer look, speak first about its wireless connection. The first thing is cell communication, which is good in every sense, the signal is steady and doesn't get lost at all. We stuffed two SIM cards inside and for both of them the indications of signal had their maximum, aside of very rare exceptions. The same stability and speed we felt using LTE connection, the voice is nicely transmitted on both sides of the line. As for Bluetooth, nothing special or supernatural, everything is just fine. As for GPS, here the things become quite fluffy and smelly. First of all, the smartphone doesn't quickly understand your real location. Secondly, it really struggles with orientation in space. Once when I was in a car and moving over 100 km per hour, it tried to assure me that I was watching behind. Does exactly our phone have this problem or is it global? I have no idea, but I hope that only our team had issues like that. Now, check how it looks. It is a simple brick-style phone without some crazy solutions in design like having slider, folding mechanisms or a couple of separate modules. Frankly, there is nothing to scold nor praise in it, except for a few things. For example, without a case, device feels wildly thin. I like it. Secondly, there is kinda a Rasta painting style on sale that honestly makes my pulse go quicker. In third, the back and the front are both noticeably bent towards the frame. I am still not sure whether I like that waterfall style idea or not, but traditional color distortion on the edges of the face takes its place. The fingerprint reader following all modern trends is built into the screen. It is optical, has adequate unlock speed and we don't have any question to its stability. There is only one one thing that doesn't make me happy about its optical origin, when you want to unlock the smartphone in the dark, you are likely to get a hole in Nova Beam right into your eyes, cause smartphone needs maximum brightness to read the fingerprint. By that time your eyes will probably be adapted to a night low light, so it will bring highly unpleasant feelings. By the way, it's related to the most of the phones with those kind of sensors. An alternative way to unlock the phone is a face recognition based on the front camera. It works also fine recognizing you quickly with a bit of a fail attempts that basically every phone might have. I need to warn you that in complete dark the smartphone also needs to show a hell of a beam from its screen to highlight your face. Next Next goes the screen itself, here it is 6.5 inches AMOLED with 2400 by 1080p resolution. One of its main features is the increased refresh rate of 90Hz. Bright light unlocking the dark is not the last thing that might bother you. The screen has PWM, but thankfully it can be overcome because DC dimming is also available. Overall, the screen is good, it has adequate brightness range for different daytime conditions, decent viewing angles and awesome touchscreen response. Response. My only complaint here is about one thing. When you quickly swipe through pages of the internet, for example, with the CD man turned on and at the minimum brightness, you can notice some kind of artifacts. It seems that the actors of Game of Thrones, in our case, have their beards, hairstyle or eyebrows dancing, and we definitely know that it's not cause of the lame final season. The rest is pretty fine. Also, I can't forget to mention always on display in here, it is almost non-customizable but thanks Oppo at least for its presence. Let's see what its cameras do, I'll start with the front one. In brief, taking the middle class of the phone, this photogun is just ok. In general, it can take quite decent shots, but doesn't always cope with overexposure for example, and sharpness is sometimes letting me down. The main camera unit, as recent trends demand, allow you to create both close-up shots and have it all in with extremely wide viewing angle. Unfortunately, nothing can hide from differences in colors and dynamic range between the lenses here. At least photos from the main white unit are nice. They are sharp in the right manner, with adequate lighting and far from being too dull. 
In total, it plays on a decent level, which should satisfy the needs of an average photomaniac. Night mode is also included. With it, you can create pretty good photos in bad lighting and quite acceptable in complete darkness. I would give it a shot. The smartphone can shoot videos in 4K. Taking the fact that clips are sharp and colorful, I just must give my wops to their stabilization. It's simply excellent. I would even say that thanks to this parameter, the smartphone is rocking together with the camera phones from the flagship segment. If you need super stable videos, Reno3 Pro can give it to you but only in 1080p. In this video example with running, the picture is fairly smooth and fairly stable, even though the camera was shaking like an old car on a cornfield. The result is truly wonderful. Speaking of the sound, as you probably have noticed, since there is no mini jack in the smartphone and we also didn't find an adapter in the box, I will give my comments on the sound only from the speakers. In this regard, Oppo shows itself from an extremely positive side. The sound is clear, very loud, not choking. This this is definitely a thumbs up for the speakers that you deserve. Nothing overwhelming we found in its hardware. Specs go first. The chipset here is Qualcomm Snapdragon 765G, graphics Adreno 620, our samples got 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. It almost tries to say to hell with cloud services and heavy tasks. And I have no words to disagree, in regular work there is nothing laggy at all. All the games that I launched on the smartphone ran with the highest possible FPS and the highest graphics. To be honest, it was expected because the only better Qualcomm series are the 800 chips and the one that is installed in Reno3 Pro is just one step behind. Overall the performance is decent. Briefly about benchmark test results. Here is a bunch of screenshots for you and while you are going through all of them, just know that battery will be next, so take a look at the another screenshot. In the daily use, from the full charge with two installed LTE SIM cards, the smartphone lives 24 hours on average. If all you need from the smartphone in 2020 are calls and messaging, then you can safely count on a few days of battery life, while gamers, photomaniacs and people who constantly use GPS will most likely to charge this smartphone several times a day. By the way, the battery inside of Reno3 Pro is for 40-25 mAh, charging it from the native power adapter and cable for 5 minutes will give you 13% of the battery, in 10 minutes it will rise to 27%, in 15 minutes to 41%, 30 minutes 75% and 45 minutes will get you a fully charged battery. All that would be a wonderful combination for a perfect middle class smartphone, unless the price. It may vary around 670 bucks and guess how many better smartphones for that and even less price range we found. iPhone SE 2020, Pixel 4 XL, Galaxy S10 and Note 10 Lite, OnePlus 7T, OnePlus 7T Pro, already matured Huawei P30 Pro. And the scariest thing for Oppo is that a lot of models from this list are more interesting than the hero of today's review. And that's why, as much as I would like to, in the end I can't call Reno 3 Pro some incredibly wonderful product as it won't make you forget about the competitors I mentioned above. However, will I recommend Reno3 Pro as a worthy modern smartphone? Surely yes. After all, the tests we've done and the experience we had with that phone speak for themselves. The thing is, the smartphone is not a single option on the market. I will still leave the links to the internet stores where you can buy that phone in the description box below. And if you like this video, then why not to support our channel by subscribing to it, hitting the like button and ringing the bell to stay tuned for more cool content. My thanks for watching and cheers!